Hello and welcome! Grafana Champion is here. My name is Adaria Volkova, and this channel helps you utilize Grafana to its full potential. It has been a while since my last video. Thank you all who checked up on us. A lot is happening now at Volkov Labs, and we must choose the next task carefully to stay on schedule. In this video, I present a simple yet elegant solution you can employ for your next demo session. It converts production data into demo values on the fly, making your dashboard demo ready in minutes. Are you ready? Let's go! Real data is the best for demos, but for obvious reasons you cannot use it most of the time. Yet, you want your data to be as realistic as possible. Shout out to our Director of Engineering, Alex. Thank you for developing such an incredibly easy-to-use solution. Alex called it Anonymizer. The solution works great for us. It proved itself many times as reliable, easy and quick to set up. You will work with three components while configuring the Anonymizer. The Anonymizer JavaScript, a list of values to replace, and a list of values to replace them with. Let's configure an Anonymizer in Grafana. First, I need a panel that permits the embedding of JavaScript code and has an option to run it after the page is loaded. The dynamic text panel is a perfect candidate, selected from the list here. On the left, I create one query with the name to replace. Data source time scale. Query select name from devices. Switch to the table view. This is going to be the list of values I want to replace. Then add another query. I will name it replace with. Change the data source to mixed and with that I can choose the static data source for the second query. Here I will enter the list of values I want to replace with. Let's name it dummy. And fast forward on the list creation process. The static data source is a great choice for your troubleshooting needs. We recently released a new version. Note that you can move the rows up and down like this, and here the sequence number changes accordingly. Also, we added these buttons to expand and collapse fields and values. Alright, I just set up two lists of values. Here I can switch and see what they are. Moving along. Next, on the right, in the render template, I select all data. With that, my JavaScript runs only once as opposed to the every row when the script runs once for every fetched by data source row. I do not want that. Here, I enable the JavaScript after content ready option, which makes this area visible. In the content, I will keep the default script. It displays the query result in the JSON format. Switch back from the table view. Here is the view given by the default script. Next, I insert the anonymizer script here. You can find it ready to copy in this blog post. The link in the description down below. Data index 0 is how you can reference the first query data frame, and data with index 1 is how you can reference the second query data frame. All right, that's all. The anonymizer is implemented and configured. The anonymizer script is loaded into the browser memory and replaces values on the fly. If I click Save and Apply, the panel will show the replaced values. Now let's see how to apply the anonymizer to your dashboard. There are two methods. One is to have the dynamic text panel on a separate dashboard, like this panel I just created. When the dashboard with the anonymizer panel is open, the anonymizer script is loaded into the browser's memory. If I open any other dashboard, I have a few to choose from, all values on that other dashboard are replaced on the fly with no performance degradation, which is a pleasant bonus, nice and easy. The other method is to directly add the dynamic text panel with the embedded anonymizer script on the dashboard. For that, I can use a new Grafana function, copy panel. Open the dashboard, go to the Add, and select the Paste panel menu. Make the panel smaller and move to somewhere down here. The disadvantage of the second method is that you have to modify the dashboard, but the most significant advantage is that when you refresh the page, all values remain replaced. With the first method, you risk accidentally refreshing the page, wiping out the anonymizer from memory, and replacements stop working. The first method is excellent when you work on screen recording or creating images for documentation. The second method is fantastic for live demos. 
Recently, I posted this blog post on our website, volkoflabs.com slash blog, where I explain the anonymizer in writing. As I mentioned earlier, you can copy the anonymizer script from there. Let me know how it goes when you use the anonymizer for your projects. Feel free to ask questions in the comment section below. I'm happy I found time to create a new video for our channel. Like and subscribe, use big thanks and sponsor on GitHub. That is all for now. Thank you for watching and see you next time.